everybody, it's Lynn with Soft Squares. Today we're going to talk about putting a binding on a quilt and how to figure out how much you need. So I have this quilt here that is ready to go and we are going to measure it so we can see how big it is. And I'm going to measure on the edge of my mat and I apologize, you're probably not going to see this on camera, but this actually measures 35 doubled, which means 70 by 28 doubled, which is 56. So let's do this. Fifty six by seventy is the size sorry, the size of this quilt. And now we need to figure out how much it takes for binding. That's actually pretty easy. I'm gonna take a calculator. We're gonna do fifty six plus seventy, because we're gonna get the circumference of the square. So fifty six twice because there's two sides that are that size and 70 twice because there's two sides that are that size and I get inches 252 inches total then I'm going to divide it by 40 that's my recipe for coming up with the binding um, how many strips and I'll explain this more as we go but a width of fabric is about between 41 to 44 inches so I always just go conservative and say 40 so we're going to divide this by 40 this tells me I need 6.3 strips of, of uh, binding at width for the width of fabric or times the width of fabric and I'm going to round up to make it seven. So I'm definitely going to have enough because I underestimated on my um, inches and I'm rounding up. Okay, so seven. Now we're going to take this really pretty pink fabric and we're going to cut it so that it gives me the strips that I need. Some people measure or uh, iron I don't. I just don't. I do want to make sure my edges are lined up. Make this look better. And so you can see, see this is a really rough cut. I don't usually have them quite this bad. But I want two edges that are exact. And we're going to just line it up on one of the lines on my ruler. I honestly don't even care which ruler or which line because it doesn't matter. But I want to make sure that is at least covering. Now, one thing you have to know about me, I hate to waste fabric. And so I don't like to just like, I could come up here and just chop off and get a nice straight edge, but not me. <laughs> I want to get as much fabric out of this as I can. So we're going to go as close to the edge as we can. And yep, I cut all my edges. So see that? Okay, now the binding is going to be two and a half inches wide by um, by seven lengths and I've got this fabric doubled so I'm actually cutting through eight layers of fabric you might not want to do that and that's because my fabric is folded in half and then again and then again <laughs> so again it's totally up to you I always do it this way okay, I'm gonna make sure it's on there nice and straight you want to line up the bottom and the side. If you were to have it like this, or even just slightly, and start cutting, you would not, not have straight strips, and you would really notice it when you opened up your fabric. You would not have a line right here. You would have a peak or a valley. So really important to be straight. Okay, so two and a half inches. Here's my half inch mark, so one, two and a half. Uh, I'm measuring all that one on the ruler with the board. And there's two, remember I need a seven. So go for another two and a half. 
Now I have four. Another two and a half. Now I have six. And I'm pretty sure I don't need to cut two more because I'm already being pretty conservative as far as um, the fabric measurements. So I'm just going to cut one of these to give me my seven. Two and a half, seven. Okay, there we go. We are done with that. So now the next step is we're going to miter those corners. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a last minute thought on something I should have plugged in sooner. We're going to miter the corners on the um, binding, and I'm going to show you how to do that so that you don't have a big uh, thick seam. And because I'm back, <laughs> because I don't like to waste fabric, I'm going to show you how to do that the Lin way, because there's probably the right way and then the Lin way. Now, first thing I want to point out is you do not want this on to be sewn into your quilt. This is the um, salvage edge, and it is a little more dense, and it's what they use when they make the fabric put on the roll. And it, it because it is thicker, plus it has holes in it, it doesn't look very pretty it doesn't, it might not shrink at the same rate. You might get some puckering or some gathering. So I always cut that off. Now you don't have to cut it off, but in a minute you'll see why I cut it off here. So we did pretty good. There's a little bit on the bottom side. <laughs> it's close enough for me for what we're going to do and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to go through with each of my strips and do that. And and then in a minute we're going to press these. And honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm just lining them up on the line, but it really doesn't matter because it's all going to be different in a minute anyway. I thought I could just do that right here. And it doesn't even have to be straight. <laughs> and again, for my method, you'll see why. And all this will make sense as we go. Because we're going to miter the corner, so we're not even going to have this edge here anymore. But the reason I cut these off now instead of leaving it on, and I don't like that one, is because when we miter a corner, this is actually the process. It's going to be mitered like this. So you're going to do one across the other, and then when you sew it corner to corner and open it up, it's going to look like this. Then you're going to cut away this piece underneath. So really this whole corner is going to get cut off, but I'm going to save this corner because I swear there's a project in my future of little tiny little triangles, and I have a bunch of them saved up. So the fact that they're already trimmed down and ready to use uh, the, with the salvage just cut off is going to save me time in the future and only takes me a little bit longer right now. Okay, so we're going to go through that process. So now we're going to iron, and I apologize, but my iron is not set up with the camera view. That may change. So you get to just stare at my pretty strips for just a minute while I do this. And the only reason why I'm really even bothering is this right here obviously could be a little bit of a struggle when it comes time to put them on the binding. The binding, the way you put it on, there's so much um, folding involved with it and then it's on the very edge that unless you have a funny little kink like this, you really don't need to even worry about it. So see how I got rid of that? This I could leave on because my iron is hot, I'm just going to go ahead and hit it. But all that's going to be in the binding anyway. So there you go. There is that. So now we're going to make 
the whole strip one big long one with mitered corners. And what I do is I take all of my strips and I line them all up so that all my folds are together. You're following what I'm saying? So all my free ends are down there. We're going to go to the machine. Now if we had a direction, which we don't because this is two-sided fabric, then there would be a right side and a wrong side, and there isn't. So I'm going to take this fabric marker and make a right and a wrong side to make it easier for you to see how and why I do what I do. And so we're going to pretend this is the, the top part that has the print on it. So I don't know if you can see that little X that I just made right there. And again, this will come off with the iron and it's going to be in my little mark, my little area where it's going to disappear anyway. And when you do your miter corners, you're going to take the first corner and just send it off. Now this is actually the same side, if that makes sense. I'm going to have to do this with a print. I can clearly see I need to do this with a print. You know what, let's ignore this option. This, this was just a thought, and it's not a good one. I'm going to show you with this, and I'm going to grab a piece of some fabric that has a print a direction so that you'll see. Anyway, you're going to put right side down the first time you go. So <laughs> this has my little X on it. Then you're going to take your next piece, which is right side up, and put it like that. And then you're going to stitch across, and then when you fold it like this, did I say right side up? I meant right side down. Sorry, the two rights are going to face into each other. And then when you're, you're going to sew on an angle, and then when you fold it back, it will be straight, and you'll have the same print going on. But you're going to do that to the whole strip, and the reason I line everything up right here is because it's so much easier just to grab and put on there, and you'll, you'll see my process in a minute when we take this to the machine. But, since I've got you thoroughly confused, I'm now going to grab some fabric that has a print. And as you can tell, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. Well, this is not what I thought. Alright, so I have my scraps organized, which is a video for another day by size. So I have a bin of two and a half inch squares, or <laughs> strips, and I didn't have two of the same, but we're not really making anything right now. But as you can see, there's a right and a wrong on both of these. So if I were, oh, actually this is a perfect example, so here's a join. But if I were sewing this, I would have this face up. I would put this corner right here, and how ironic is it that this happens to have the salvage on it? When I just got through telling you I don't like to have the salvage on there at this point. So if you do have the salvage, you're going to have it off of the fabric, and if you don't, like this edge, you're going to line it up. But you want to make sure you don't catch that salvage in the seam. That's funny. That's really funny. Okay, so if I were at my sewing machine, you can, there's a couple ways you can do this because you're going to sew from here to here. Now you can draw, I didn't grab a, I'm really not being a very good demonstrator. I guess you guys will have to tell me in the comments <laughs> if any of this made sense to you. Alright, so there, now we have a straight edge. Okay, so that's going to go right there. Now we're going to sew from this edge to this edge. Now there's two ways. One, you can put the ruler on it and you can draw a line, which is what I'm going to do right now. And this is going to be your sew line. Do you see that? The other is you can just fold it and get a crease. And you want to make sure you fold it like this so that you get the, the valley. So you can sew in the valley. It's really, really hard to sew on a peak, but you can sew down in the valley. And then that will be your seam line. The other way is you can eyeball it. You can just pin it. And then I have something on my machine called a sew betty. It is a steady betty line uh, thing that I've actually 
come to not need anymore, but it was super handy and it's great for this because it shows you where your center line is, which is where your needle line is. And then you would just line it up with the machine. So this would be my steady buddy center line. This would be my, my needle. And then as the fabric goes through it, I can see this point. Because when you're sewing, you normally cannot see that point. So now let's go over the machine and sew some of these. And I hope to get my camera angle in a better angle so you can see that. And then we will add the binding. See you in a minute. Okay, so we're setting up my machine now. I'm having some technical difficulties. The camera wants to move. But I'm going to show you on these two colored strips what I was just trying to explain. So again, you want to go face down. You line the needle up. And here's my steady buddy. So this is the center line. I don't know if you can see that. And you'll notice that this line lines up with that line that I drew. But you don't even have to do it with a steady buddy. And there we have it. It's not exact, but it is actually good enough for what I'm going to do. And I realize I have the wrong color thread for the project that I'm about to do. And... I am going to switch that out. <laughs> now, I have to figure out what color I want to use. I have this little organizing system of bobbins in a sterile light container. It just happens to fit, but this is where I have a bunch of rings. These are my favorite bobbin catchers. They are amazing, but as you notice, the bobbins aren't coming out, but I have them in here by color. So I just want something that will kind of match this thread, this fabric, so it doesn't show up on a seam. And I'm going to actually pull something out from my pink bobbins just to get me by. And I think... That actually might be the color I want to use to do as a top stitch. I don't mind that. Hmm. No. I don't know why I'm putting this much thought into the bobbins, but I am. But we're going to use this light pink. And really on my bobbin, I don't care. There's a couple things I am going to care about when it comes to the bobbin. And I'm going to show you. This is my quilt. Now on the back side of the quilt, oh my goodness, the back side of the quilt on this fabric, is, or this one, the front is white, and the back has this yellow and pink print that almost gives it a, a peachy look. And the way I start out with my quilts is I always start sewing my uh, binding to the back side and then wrap it around to the front. So I do want to have white in my bobbin when I'm sewing that on just in case that line ends up being visible, because sometimes they do. And if I were to use this light pink, it actually could maybe get away with it, not be as visible. But I think what I need in my bobbin is white. And that's because it comes down to <laughs> not having to change my bobbin very often. I hate changing bobbins. I hate changing thread. And I'm one of those that I will do everything I can in one color, and then I'll switch it. I know, I'm just weird, because threading is super, super easy. But, that's part of my laziness. Alright, so we got that in there. We're going to put this away, because they will unravel. I have everything in my fingertips, and that's why I love my organization. And what I've finally done, this is like my fourth sewing room after moving several times. And I finally have got a good system. Sometimes it just takes some rearranging <laughs> or moving. 
Now, you know what? There's this variegated thread that happens to be like right here. And I'm kind of liking it. Because here's my pink. And you'll hardly see it, but when you do, it'll be very light. I don't know if you can see that over the top of that, how it just... I think I might play with this variegated one. That might just be what I want to do. I have a lot of fabric that I could pick from. Not fabric. I meant thread. I'm having a day. But I don't feel like hunting down the right shade of pink when this is not going to be a thing that really matters. Plus it's an accent and the variegated thread I always look for an excuse to use it and I think I found it. Okay, I'm going to get that guy threaded. I love my automatic threaded threader. Now, um, we cut our fabric two and a half inches wide. Oh, I got way ahead of myself. Never mind. First, <laughs> miter or corners. Nothing is going as very smoothly as I thought it would. All right, so this is, I have a so steady clear table. And you can see the reflection of my ring light. Sorry about that. Cover it up, make it easier. Anyway, okay, so here's my fabric. Remember we had that pretend right side, which honestly is not going to matter with this. Then I take my next piece, which I've hidden down below, and I'm going to go corner to corner. And my machine is a Foff 2.0, and I have a needle down position that I want. Oh, I am having a day. That's funny. Anyway, I just wanted to put a needle down. I'm so used to hitting my scissor button. So here we go. And I'm going to chain piece these, and that is bunching up because of how I put my bobbin in there. I knew that was going to happen, so you can ignore that. That's just a little quirk with my machine. So you're just going to put your pieces side by side, and then use this to help line up with that bottom corner under there, and just keep going. And if you're slightly off, it's okay. We're going to double check everything before we cut the little tails off. If we need to, we will adjust it. If it's slightly off, more likely it'll get covered up in the way the binding is applied anyway. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing this, but if this had a print, I'm flipping it. This is how I know it's going to be straight. Some people to keep this, um, because it is hard to tell with a one color two-sided fabric, to tell the right side from the wrong side and you want all your seams on the wrong side. Some people will actually go to their iron before they get to the step and press this in half, which will put the seam on the, or the, the fold on the printed side, or what you would call the, the right side. I am able to keep this straight because of just one little twist that I make, and then I think sometimes it's not always the right, and that's okay. I will check it all out in just a minute. And am I normally this disorganized when I sew? Sometimes. Okay, probably more times than not. It's all right. All done with that. Okay, now we're gonna take the scissors and just cut between these. Before I go any further, we're going to look and see. Yep, so far everything is right where it needs to be. My little twist was right. And it's super easy to fix. So we're gonna actually cut this off, leaving about a quarter inch. And add that to my stash of little triangles waiting for me to create a project someday. And I'm doing this a little odd. I'm just not in my little routine right now, so I don't normally have to pick up and put the scissors down. I also have a drawer to the right because I'm using an office desk. And so what I do, anytime I have a binding or a border or anything really long, I stuff the edges or the fabric into that drawer. And that's where I'm putting it right now. So then it's not on the floor because I have dogs and I want to keep them away from the fat projects. And I just don't like things on the floor. Oop. 
That was awesome. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. All right. I think this is the last one. Oh, and actually, I skipped a step I told you to do. I told you to, to double check to make sure it's straight before you cut those off. And I can tell you right now, this is not straight. You see how they don't line up just right? But for me, it's okay because that's actually off a lot. <laughs> Normally, I would encourage you to re-sew that, but I don't, I have a trick to doing that because what's going to happen is it's going to be doubled over and then sewn into the, the binding and it, just depending on your seam allowance I can make that disappear but I would not encourage you to work with something like that until you're comfortable. This is really what we want. We want this. Front and back. See how it's just straight and really you should do, <laughs> do this part before you do your little cutting so that you have enough fabric to reposition and uh, even though you can still cut it off I'm a minimalist we don't want to waste anything all right so now I'm taking by the way I have to show you this is my latest little stash of little triangles I just someday I'm gonna make a project and I have a whole bunch more okay so now we're gonna actually put the binding on and as I mentioned earlier when I do a binding I always start by adding it to the back side and then flip it around to the front. And here we go. <laughs> and I hope this works. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the folded side or the wrong side down. Again, with it being the same color, it's kind of hard. And that was my beginning piece. So I have a long tail right there. Now remember, I put white in my bobbin earlier. So my, my, um, the bobbin stitching will show up on the white, but now I know that this is down and which is the right side. If you had a print, it'd be pretty obvious. You're going to leave some space. You don't start on that corner. You want to come down mid mark or whatever, and just kind of come in a little bit. I don't know. I want to say eight inches. I'm just kind of throwing it out. You could do less, but start with that. And then I'm leaving my regular sewing foot on, not my quilting foot, my regular sewing foot. And that is, remember, this is a two and a half inch wide piece of fabric. And now it's doubled over. So now it is one and a quarter. And then we're using the five eighths of an inch foot. And that, I'm going to sew a little bit and then explain. So we just line up the edges. normally you keep going but I want to do a visual so you have your 5 eighths of an inch um, line you're going to fold this over and then over again on the back side and you see how because my bobbin is white you don't see that and then when we tack that on it will be good but if for some reason because sometimes things happen it's not even you won't notice that line but that's the exact measurement that you need to get that without being short. Now there are times when I have needed to make a binding out of two inch um, white fabric and I would use my quarter inch foot and it's perfect. It's just a little tiny bit thinner but it is perfect. But just remember for the two and a half just use your regular sewing foot. And I will fast forward. I will make this go fast motion for you. <laughs> during the video. Well, maybe not. I don't know if I know how to do that just yet. Maybe I'll just talk my way through it. I don't know how loud this is. Now, my machine has a built-in walking foot. I don't know if you can see that. It is actually this this thing right here and that so the machines you have to add it to it's a big clunky thing goes out the back this is built in and so I can take it off or put it on I love that that's really the reason why I got this machine um, but I hit something ah, hopefully it's still recording but I feel like I still need to help my thicker fabrics going 
through this. I'm really sorry we're moving around so much. I really messed up my my tripod. I might have to turn this off for just a minute. 